uh, with the Treasurer Wayne Swan there because the Prime Minister Julia Gillard has just begun a media conference. She's in Wynyard on the north coast of Tasmania. To partner with a six million dollar investment they are making in ensuring that the production processes here are cleaner and greener. What that means is that they will reduce their electricity use, particularly the way in which the cheese vats work and how they're heated. That is A bit of a shaky line there to Wynyard on the north coast of Tasmania. The Prime Minister has been visiting the uh, Fonterra Australia dairy plant there. Uh, we'll, we'll go back to that. Uh, obviously, it's a bit of a shaky line, so we'll see how we go. All of the cheeses that people know so well from this business. So this is great news for the people who work here. Around 70 people work directly in this business. Around 30 are engaged as truck drivers working with the business. We're very pleased to be able to make this grant and we know that it will help uh, create cleaner and greener production processes. This is part of what we're able to do around the country through our Clean Technology Fund. One of the things that we ensured the money from putting a price on carbon went to, uh, as we move towards an era of less carbon pollution, our contribution to tackling climate change, we want to make sure that businesses are able to adapt and this clean technology grant assists with that. Carbon pricing does the heavy lifting. It sends the right signal signals to businesses to cut their carbon pollution, and we work with them too through programs like this one. So thank you very much. You. I'm also here with Sid Sidebottom to announce that we will be bringing a jobs expo back to his electorate. We have had jobs expos here before in the federal electorate of Braddon and we will be having another one shortly in Devonport and it's actually not the first time we've had a jobs export expo there. Uh, this is part of what we do around the country. We've had more than 70 jobs expos around the country. They are a fantastic occasion where employers with jobs that they want workers for come together with working people who need jobs all in the one place at the one time putting people together into that all-important job opportunity. And across Tasmania, having run these jobs expos, we've seen a thousand people get successfully into work, job opportunities picked up at a jobs expo. So that next jobs expo will be on the 21st of June, conducted at the East Devonport Recreation Centre. Uh, can I say to everyone, get ready. I know that they've been well supported by the community in the past, and I know that Sid and his team will be working with employers, training organisations and the local community to make that a great success. Putting together these two announcements, what is it all about for Tasmania? Well, it's all about jobs and growth. It's about making sure we've got the best of employment opportunities here in Tasmania. I travel here very frequently and every time I come, people talk with a real sense of pride about where they live. They love living here. They love showing it off to visitors from the mainland and from right around the world. But they're also conscious that their economy, the economy of Tasmania, has been under pressure uh, as a result of the high Australian dollar and other changes in the Tasmanian economy. Which is why it's the right time to keep focusing here on creating new jobs. I'm glad we were able to support this business today and I look forward to the Jobs Expo to put more people into work. I'll turn now to Sid for some comments. Thank Sid. You. Um, thank you very much, Prime Minister, and thank you very much to Fonterra for hosting us. Uh, the dairy industry, as part of my portfolio as well, has a fantastic opportunity in Tasmania, and it's wonderful that companies like Fonterra and others are consolidating um, their works uh, and processing uh, here in Tasmania, and most especially on the northwest coast. Uh, we've got opportunities. We've also got challenges, Prime Minister, and I do thank you for your support through a number of our programs. Uh, we've also got a program filling the factories, and uh, we're very keen to be able to support that and work with the state government and uh, Dairy Tasmania in particular. To Fonterra, thank you for what you're doing here, your consolidation here and at Sprayton, uh, who are also very successful in getting uh, multi-thousands of dollars in terms of running out uh, further extension programs, and a very important employer to Tasmania as well and to the northwest coast. 
Uh, Prime Minister, uh, you know that we've got challenges. We've also got wonderful opportunities. And decisions have been made most recently in the Tasmanian Parliament in relation to forestry. And we uh, are looking forward to working with the state government and all those stakeholders uh, to make our industry grow again as it can. And, uh, and we ask people uh, on the fringes of that debate to give this a chance, Prime Minister. I know you support that. And those funds that will flow into Tasmania and industries that will employ people, particularly those that have been affected by the downturn in the forestry industry. So thank you very much for coming. Thank you. There's more to see. And, uh, and more people to meet on your travels here. We do thank you for coming, and you're always very, very welcome on the northwest of Tassie. Thank you. And thank you to Fonterra. Thank you. Thank you. Did you want to say anything about the work here? I might. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, we're happy to take any questions. Thank you. Right. Well, I actually will go to the expert on that. There we go. Um, here. Yes, uh, we will look to and are looking to helping to fill uh, the factories and there's more than one way to milk a cow as we've said before and uh, we're working very closely <laughs> and, and I'm also talking with the Prime Minister and others to make sure we get that funding so that, I dropped that in Prime Minister but uh, uh, we're well aware of that and we're working very much to, uh, to fulfil that. That's a great opportunity for Tassie and filling the factories can get underway right now anyway so that's terrific. Sorry? Well, they're asking uh, for $400,000, um, as they have from others as well, both in kind and in cash. Uh, and uh, we're working with them, we have, through uh, former ministers and the current minister now. So, looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Uh, well, I uh, have uh, caught up with those comments, even as I've travelled here in Tasmania. And in relation to those comments, let me just say this. Uh, when I announced this morning with my colleagues, the Deputy Prime Minister and Jenny Macklin, the Minister for Disability Reform, that we would choose to put a 0.5% Medicare levy increase on to fund disability care, I assume, from what was in today's newspapers and the comments of the Shadow Treasurer on radio this morning, that the opposition was very likely to oppose this Medicare levy increase. Uh, from what has happened during the hours since, uh, the Leader of the Opposition has called on me to bring the legislation forward, but has been unable or unwilling to say whether or not he would support a half a percent increase in the Medicare levy to fund disability care. So let me say this very clearly to the Leader of the Opposition and to the people of Australia. If the Leader of the Opposition is prepared to support this half a percent increase in the Medicare levy to fund disability care, then I will bring the legislation into the Parliament immediately. If the Leader of the Opposition is unable to answer the question what he believes in about this matter, or wants to oppose this increase to the Medicare levy, then I will take it to the Australian people in September. Uh, well, we have to uh, get the support in Parliament to get legislation through. That's why it matters. And it also matters, I think, to the people of Australia to know what it is that the Leader of the Opposition stands for on this matter. Uh, the Leader of the Opposition has said consistently uh, that he supports the National Disability Insurance Scheme, disability care. Well, you can't support something and then not fund it. Now, if the Leader of the Opposition is saying that it's not the right way forward to increase the Medicare levy by half a percent, then the obligation is on him to show every dollar and every cent of how he would fund it. I said this morning when I announced this Medicare levy that I'm incredibly conscious on this matter that 410,000 Australians with disabilities and their carers and their families hang off every word because they've waited so long for change. You owe it to them and you owe it to the people of Australia to be clear about your intentions. This is not an area for platitudes, it's not an area for fudge, it's an area for facts and precision. I and my colleagues this morning have clearly outlined 
how we will proceed with disability care, how we are determined to increase the Medicare levy by half a percent to assist with the funding of disability care. I'd ask the other side of politics to be equally as clear. They owe Australians with disabilities that much. Uh, well, that was a, a different set of circumstances, very different from the circumstances that confront us now. I'm dealing with the circumstances that confront us now. And dealing with those circumstances, as I said this morning, I have changed my mind. And there have been three factors that have caused me to rethink on this matter. Uh, first, the government is getting less tax money than it had expected, and I made clear on Monday just how severe that reduction in tax money received by the government is. Uh, number two, I've had plenty of discussions now with states and territories working with their actual figures, their real budgets, and I understand how big a commitment it is for states and territories to not only get up to the benchmark, which we are requiring them to do, but to keep funding growth in the system. And number three, I've heard really clearly too from those who have advocated for change for so long that they want the peace of mind that comes with knowing there is an ongoing source of revenue to support disability care, so I'm responding to that. Well, I think on this uh, that it's just like Medicare, uh, and uh, we've got a fairly uh, young audience here, and uh, that's good, uh, but I'm old enough to remember the struggles around creating Oh, once again, we're having a few issues uh, with Labor that link there, but we'll stick with it still. Fought for and opposed, abolished and then brought back. This was the story of Medicare, Labor fighting for it every step of the way. And Labor said to the Australian community then, if you want Medicare, then there'll have to be a levy to pay for it. Now, all these years later, of course, actual expenditure on hospitals and Medicare is more than the Medicare levy raises. But all these years later, I've never met an Australian who would say that they'd prefer to be without Medicare. Never met one. Not in all my years going through communities has anybody ever said to me, let's get rid of Medicare. And overwhelmingly, Australians say they accept that they've got to pay a levy to have a system as good as Medicare. We're asking Australians to show exactly that same spirit to create the next big institution of fairness in our society, disability care. We all put in. We all get the benefit of knowing that if we ever ended up with a disability or someone in our family did or one of our friends did, that there would be appropriate care for them. Well, the rest of the money to fund the scheme will come from uh, responsible savings that the government makes. Uh, we've already shown a preparedness to do that, to do things like uh, make changes to the pri private health insurance rebate. That wasn't easy. It was pretty controversial at the time. A lot of false claims made about it. Uh, but we said that's a fast-growing area of expenditure and it's responsible to make a saving there. Oh, well, we initiated a review quite a while back, uh, uh, John Brumby and others working through matters associated with the GST. Many of them are very technical matters uh, about the way the GST works. Uh, but beyond that review, there are some very fundamental values matters for Australians when it comes to GST distribution. And the question of values is, do you believe that wherever people live in our great country, that they are entitled to the same standard of health and education services as their other citizens. Do we believe that or don't we? Well, I do. And if you do believe that, then that means that you don't want to see Tasmania be ripped off when it comes to GST. Now, this is a big issue because the Leader of the Opposition has said he supports a per capita distribution of the GST. He certainly said that in Western Australia. Well, if you say it in Western Australia, those words come back to haunt you in Tasmania because a per capita distribution would mean ripping $600 million out of the GST here in Tassie. That's thousands of nurses gone, hundreds of doctors gone, hundreds of teachers gone, hundreds of childcare protection workers gone. Tassie couldn't afford that, and that will be a big issue come voting day. 
Uh, well, let's remember, if you look back over the last 50 years, so I'm doing a bit of history for the group today, uh, but if you go back over the last 50 years, uh, for more than 30 of them, WA was a net taker. Uh, of GST uh, revenue from other states, uh, or a net, uh, we didn't always have GST across that period, but a net taker of government support from other states. And why was that? Well, huge landmass, sparsely populated, obviously people uh, who live there couldn't afford to put in enough tax revenue to have all of the services that people need. So they relied on other states to help them step up. Uh, get the services that they needed. They've gone on to develop the state of Western Australia into the economic powerhouse that it is today. Uh, but there are always swings and roundabouts, and whilst it is the economic powerhouse that it is today, uh, then there are obligations towards states like Tasmania to assist with GST. Well, uh, this has been uh, a long time in the making and a lot of work done here in Tasmania uh, by uh, people like Sid and by a range of our local members. Uh, what I believe is that this gives us a new start here in Tasmania and that the obligation is now on everyone to seize the prospect that this peace gives us and to get on with creating jobs in Tasmania as well as securing the conservation outcomes that come out of this agreement. This all started not because we took a view, it all started because formerly warring parties, conservationists and foresters had decided it was time to sit round a table and see if they could chart a better way forward. It's a tribute to them that they found that better way forward. Now the fringes of this debate need to fall away and together uh, those concerned about conservation and those focused on jobs and forestry need to work to realise all of this agreement. We will play our part with almost $300 million of investments into jobs and growth in Tasmania. Well, it's, uh, certainly I want to see that. I think that there are always some irresponsible fringe elements that want to disturb uh, what the vast majority of people have agreed, and my message to them would be the same as Sid's message to them. It is time for those fringe elements to fall away and to let the mainstream that has come together get on with the job for Tasmania. Uh, well, I can't uh, give you uh, what the opposition's uh, plans or cutbacks for Tasmania would be. Uh, what I know on the public record already is uh, there's $600 million of GST at risk. Uh, the NBN, which is coming to Tasmania first, would be replaced by something that cost households $5,000 to get connected, and even then it wouldn't work right. Uh, that people who rely on the school kids bonus wouldn't get that anymore that people who have got a tax cut through the changes in the tax-free threshold would pay more tax, and that the increases that we put through to the pension would also be taken away. That is all crystal clear. What else would be ripped out of Tasmania? You'd need to direct to the Leader of the Opposition. Well, I think you know, the obligation here is on the signatories who first came together, the parties who started this process, to do everything they can to use their abilities to uh, silence uh, those who haven't gone with the mainstream consensus. I do think this is you know, it's a new day, it's a new opportunity and it should be seized. We certainly intend to play our part, creating jobs and improving economic growth here in Tasmania. Well, we're now beyond that. What we said was that the agreement would need to be the subject of legislation. The legislation's been done, so we will play our part as we've always promised to do. Thank you very much. OK, so that was live from Wynyard on the north coast of Tasmania. That was via broadband. Apologies for the quality of that link.